Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you about uh, sharding and sharding on Kubernetes. And uh, I'll just dive in directly. Let me briefly introduce myself first. I am the founder and CEO of a company called Ongress. Ongress is the short for on Postgres. So you can imagine what we do. For people that know me, I'm the Postgres, Postgres, Postgres people. If you call me three times, I will pop up anywhere you are. <laughs> so I've been working for Postgres for quite a long time, more than 20 years already. And I like to work on R&D, research and development, trying to come up with stupid ideas. Some of them become something tangible, the software, uh, like for example, Stackrest, which is a software I'm gonna be slightly talking about today that we have developed as a fully open source project for running Postgres on Kubernetes. I have done a lot of tech talks around 130, probably close to 140 as of today. They're all online on my website, aht.es, quite short. So you're gonna check them out. Uh, there's a lot of talks at the DOK also. So feel free to find me over there. And I've also like to do some nonprofits. I run a Postgres nonprofit foundation and I've been elected also as an Amazon hero 2019. But let's talk about sharding today. So very briefly, what is sharding? Sharding or horizontal scaling is basically splitting the workload, the data that I have on a potentially large database into multiple writer instances. Most relational databases, for example, have a typical architecture of a single primary and multiple writers, sorry, a single writer node and multiple reads. But if you really want to scale this writer node, despite the normally scale very, very well, but if you want to scale this writer node, you need to split the data into multiple chunks and direct each of those chunks to a single writer instance. This is what it means, sharding and horizontal scaling. Um, it allows you to do basically two things, to scale the writes, obviously, but also to reduce the blast radius. If one of your writer instances, for example, fails, and even the HA mechanism fails also, or there's some data corruption, it will affect only a percentage of your users. So it's also very good for security and um, availability purposes. Now, a typical sharding architecture with a relational database like Postgres will look like this. You will have at the bottom all the shards, like where all the data is split into these chunks that will go to a, a specific server, which potentially will have a replica. So here we have primaries and replicas for high availability purposes. And on top of that, you have coordinators or routing or transaction routers they are called differently in different technologies that would obviously coordinate the, the queries, receive the query serve as the entry point, and then spin, uh, sorry, send the queries to the appropriate shard or shards and resolve the queries. They may also be highly available. So this is an architecture that is easy to understand, but if you think about how to deploy this architecture, it's non-trivial. You need to deploy not one server, but N plus one. But then if you want high availability with M number of instances, you multiply that. Then you really need to add typically, at least for Postgres connection pulling, and specific configurations and potentially specific uh, extensions, and then functions to build the clusters and what about distributed backups? So operationally, it becomes very complex. So what we have done at Stackrest, thanks by running Kubernetes, thanks by, by the power of CRDs, is to create a custom CRD that makes deploying this whole architecture with tuning, with high availability, with almost everything that I mentioned here, as simple as typing this YAML. Can you type this YAML? then you've got to start that cluster immediately. And it's very high level. It just talks about the number of instances, the size, the versions, and that's pretty much it. Then you will get on the web console, if you use Stackrest for this, you will get a nice UI where you can see all the status of your coordinators, the shards, and all the characteristics of it. So just to name uh, the features that this, this supports already is first of all, is supporting with Citus. Citus is an extension for Postgres, which guess what it does? sharding and uh, we just take all the power of Citus and make it extremely easy to orchestrate. It supports both high availability, high availability for both coordinators and shards. It does integrate connection pooling, which is very important for Citus. It supports distributed backups. So you get a consistent backup across all your shards. Um, and also, and this is very unique in the industry now, it's not even present on the Azure, at least yet, uh, heterogeneous shards, you know, that distribution of data may not be homogeneous and uh, one shard needs to be bigger than the other one. We can achieve this with a JAMA file by overriding uh, the specification for a particular shard or shards. And also automated operations for resharding and restarting a cluster. So that's all that I wanted to talk about you today. I'm also available on DOK, Slack, Twitter, LinkedIn, anywhere. Ping me for any questions you may have. Thank you.